<laughs> Hi, I'm Trapper Dan. That's Shane Vogel over there, and that's Bob Grohl. Today we're going to be skinning and fleshing raccoon. <laughs> okay, we got a nice, nice winter coon here. Beautiful fur on it. First thing you want to do on your coon before you skin them, make sure they're absolutely dry. And I mean, not even damp. Dry, dry. Take your fur comb, comb them backwards. The reason we comb them backwards is the hair will maintain that when we take it off of the drying board. Notice drying board, not a stretcher. We do not stretch our hides. I'm going to make sure we got all the burrs out of it. Go up, but it'll it'll make the fur look really it'll it'll pop that hair up when it's being graded. And uh, anything to look impressive helps. Now I do something most people will tell you don't waste your time. I clip my front legs off on all my coon. I've been scratched and got infections too many times not to do it. So I just clip them off. I use a Master Force clipper from Menards, they're about 13 bucks. Uh, they do a nice job up, up through coyotes. Uh, if you do scratch yourself on a coon nail, definitely get uh, keep hydrogen or peroxide here in the shop. Get it cleaned up right away. It, it'll save you a lot of grief. Come over and look at a coon this way. You can kind of see the hairline. And it's a lot of people have trouble visualizing this hairline. But that's where my cut wants to go. What that does for me, it gives me the most length I'm going to get out of this coon. I'm not making that coon longer. I, I hate that thought that people say, well, you cut the coon to make it bigger. You don't. You get the most out of the coon that you can. We're going to, we're going to take this up in a circle, kind of a, like a U-shape, and then go from there. Start at the top of the leg. You can see that hairline there that I'm going to follow. Real good rule of thumb, too, is to find the knuckle. Stop just short of the knuckle. You really can't see the hairline. Visualize it. Just come up. Just short of the knuckle there. Do the same on this side. Coming up the top. This side you can really see the distinct hairline. So just come right up. I just come right across. This coon's a little bit cold. It's a little bit actually a little bit easier. I'm just going to find where my cuts are so they line up. So my, my cuts came out all lined up. I flip it around. There's no hair on the butt, so just go right around it. Come right up the center to your other cut. Then I switch knives. This is what they call a beaver knife. Uh, it's rounded. What it does is if you cut with this knife here and you're down and you slip, you're going to punch a hole right through your hide. I just open it up with, with my beaver knife. Get some, get some freedom here. Loosen that hide up. I'll even use the back of the knife just to force it. All I'm doing is just really working it. This coon is full of fleas. Um, I'm not a fan of fleas. Normally I would uh, spray it down. Again, I'm just opening their legs up. Everybody says, how fast can you go? Who cares? It's fur. Take care of it. The more you take care of it, the more it's worth. The better appearance you'll have. Take your time. You know, most guys, I run a fur shop here. And most of these guys, they're usually under 30 coon. So, so what? What are you going to save, you know, on two coon a day by rushing through it? Just take your time. Do it right. Got to of free here. We do have clamps available for the animal, but a bigger coon, there's enough weight to just hold it by itself. I'll slip a steel underneath the leg I'll just bounce it up that freed up that leg I'll go over to the other side make sure I'm not in the meat get underneath I just use the let the weight of the coon help me I 
Again, if you start cutting in the meat, just use your round knife. Push your round knife in. You're not going to cut your hide. So you can get away with the round knife. And uh, just use the back end of your knife to force it. But you need to free up. Um, this part of the round knife is sharp. So instead of switching knives, you can use the back part of your knife to cut. Yeah, now we're going to work around the tail and I'm going to use my round knife just to lo loosen that up down to the tail here then both sides clip the coon on the belly if you want whatever you're comfortable with you know there's really no you know, do it the way you do it the way that works best for you. And what I do is I run the by the tail there, and I just shake it to loosen it up a little bit. Okay, this here's a bench model tail puller. You can use two sticks, two screwdrivers, anything. Um, since I do a lot of coon here, it works easy for me to have it mounted to my bench. Weight of the coon is always away from you. You kind of got to work it a little bit, the colder the coon. And you see, you just heard it pop. I won't try to pull that whole coon down. I'll, I'll back up and then I'll come with this. That gives me the full tail out. This is a new, new gambrel that I, I just got. I uh, kind of really like it. Put the coon's hind legs in there. I just work my hide down a little bit with my hands here before I clamp it. Okay. Now I'm going to clamp her in. Same though. Make sure you got that belly coming down, otherwise, you're going to tear your hide every time I pull it. So let me, uh, see if I can save this. So I'll free it up a little bit here. Hopefully I won't turn it off. See the front legs? I actually got a space through there already. If not, I just make a space. I just pull the hide down. And lower to a more comfortable height. And just a tad bit of tension on it. Not a real lot. And then I go with a Next time I'll have uh, a serrated edge, serrated knife, doesn't dull up around bone like a smooth blade. So I'll come over, kind of hold the knife up at an angle back to the, back to the hide so I don't, or back to the body so I cut into the carcass and not not to hide. Just work it down. Slowly work it down. Getting a little bit of tension on it at all times. There's my ear. Kind of see the white ear? I'll just cut right through. Not worried about the fat because we're going to flush it. Come around to the other side. Go right down to the skull. Keeping my knife at an angle up. When you get through the lip like that, cut, just cut the lower lip off. Don't got no fur value. Just cut it off. 
I'm going to let the eyes come back behind the eyes a little bit. Just pop. Cut the nose off. And you're done. Now, not really done. I did not split the tail. If you're going to freeze this coon, which all coons should be frozen before you flesh them, don't split the tail because they dry out. I'll split the tail when I'm ready to flesh. Find the ears, cut all the way through to the bone. Ears all the way to the bone, coming around a little bit. Free that up around the skull, free it up around the lower jaw here. Again, keeping my knife at an angle towards the head. See how nice them eyes come out when you do that? When I see that I'm free on the lower jaw, I'll just slip my knife through, cut the lower jaw off. Come down to the nose, and when I hit the nose, I angle back towards the mouth. Take it all off. Okay. Fur docks in the fur. It's a lot easier to clean it off when the animal's whole before you skin it. But if you have to, you gotta you gotta pull the hair apart, otherwise you'll have big bear spots because you'll pull the hair right out with your comb. And uh, just pick it, break it up, and then you can brush it. That'll take care of the burrs. But again, now these were these were taken by a hound guy, so I'm sure he scun right in the woods. But it is what it is, but they still got to be cleaned up before we flesh. Otherwise, like I said, I'll find every one of them burrs my fleshy knife and poke a hole in it. You know, you work hard for your fur, you might as well take care of it. Get the get the best possible price you can for it. It always amazes me that people go through, they'll spend tons and tons of money to get their fur, and then when they get it, they won't take care of it. And that, uh, like I said, it doesn't see just amazes me. It's a little bit of time. What you put into it is what you get out of it. The more you put into it, the better looking you make it, the higher you're going to get paid. Do when, it's, when I think I got it very free is I'll grab it by the tail and I'll brush it backwards before I flesh it. Again, that'll give it a little bit of that hair, a little bit of memory to really pop when it comes off the stretcher or the first shaper. Flushing coon. There's no wherever you want to start. I do it. This way, some guys start on the belly, some guys start on the back. It really doesn't matter. Um, take a take a zip tie over there, the zip tie, and put tires together. Okay. Your, your I love my post knife. There's out there. There's millions of people that use neckers. I've scun or fleshed thousands of coons with a necker knife. I'll never uh, use one again. I just don't like it. The post knife is far superior. They're about the same price. Now what I did there is I sharpened a sharp edge and then I laid a burr on it. So when I have this knife flat, I'm riding on the burr so I'm not cutting into the flesh. Come up right about the eyes, the ears is where you start. Come right down. Keep your knife flat. 
on the board. I work it down just to free up this hide. Now, a lot of guys won't do this. Just keep flesh in their coon. I don't really care how long it takes me. So what I do is I keep my legs long when I stand. I flip it up and I hook it on the leg. And then I do the belly. That's the belly done. Flip back over. Straight down the back. Clean that up. I got the leg. I always turn my coon. If I don't skin it, I turn it because a lot of people have hesitation marks. And in hesitation marks, I will find them with my blade every time, and I'll tear your hide. So I go straight off. Where them hesitation marks might be cut. See right here. That's what I call a hesitation mark. I go the other way, and it flips up. I'll cut the hide every time. Let's go straight down. It takes a couple seconds. Um, coon flashing, it all depends on the time of year that they're took, but you can usually do a coon five, six minutes. That's all it takes. Um, but take your time. Now, when you got holes, I use, just use my flat knife and I kind of push. I do angle. Um, it's a very bad habit. I don't recommend it. It just happens to be how. I get around holes. Seems to work for me. One of two things will happen. Either it'll work out just fine for you or you'll tear it to hide. Small coon like this, you tear to hide, just pitch it away. It ain't, it ain't worth salvaging. I get around the holes best I can. Come up to the leg again. Then I can just push here. There's no. Uh, no reason to use the sharp edge of my knife. Get it good and going. Then I'll come back up and clean off around the leg. And just rotate it on the leg. And I know it's a little time consuming, but it works fine. Now you're going to cut the leg off, so you just need to get like by the underarms. The rest of the leg you ain't got to worry about. Go across the back here. And I just push it till it kind of gets tough. When it gets tough, that's where we're going to use our sharps in a little bit. I like to finish off the legs first. Again, keep my knife flat. And I'm pushing here. I probably could have used the sharps and cut that. As I get older, I'm sure I will be using my sharps. And I just flush straight down the legs. Clean them up. I put her back up, and now I'm going to do my back. This is where we use the sharps. Again, keep your knife flat. Here's one secret. The fatter the coon, the easier it is to flesh. Just is. Take my time cleaning that up. Always keep your hide tight. There's a lot of gristle right there. You ain't gotta be perfect. Just break it up, it'll dry. Don't leave gobs either. These little, these little pieces you see that I'm leaving, that's just fine. But all of a sudden it'll go real smooth, then you go back to using your dull side and just pushing it off. The flatter you can keep your knife, the easier it'll work for you. I'll come back sometimes and try to go over it. Good enough. Yeah. 
down near the tail here there's going to be another big thing of gristle not so much on this coon here it kind of came right off I pushed it now clean your tails up a couple different ways a lot of guys use a fillet knife I just use my sharps. I just lay the tail out. And it takes a little bit of practice, but I'm only using a little bit of my knife here. I'm cleaning it up. Getting the majority of the fat off. Come back, that's all clean. Cut the end of the tail off. The bone was in there, don't worry about it. Ain't gonna make a difference. And then I just take my dull side. I push all the grease that's in there out. Now I don't get too much too high. I want it to stay flat. Otherwise you will cut the tail off. But that tail is relatively grease free now. The rest will dry. Let's talk about stretchers. When you're putting up your coon, there's wire stretchers and there's wood stretchers. The wire stretchers, throw them away. They're junk. If you got a lot of them, give me a call and I'll show you how you can, can use them. But we, we would combine them with, with wood. So they aren't totally useless, but pretty much they are junk. My wooden stretchers are anywhere from four to six feet long, depending for the size of the coons. Everything is at seven and a half inches, so I measure an eight inch coon. Now there's Dakota boards out there, which go eight inches, give you an eight and a half inch coon when you're done. But uh, I'll tell you what, in Wisconsin here, two out of a thousand coon will make it that big. That's just, just the way it is. All my, my sizes are marked where my large, large 2X, 3X, and 4X on down so that when I'm pinning, if I'm close by, I can either bring it down a size or push it back up if I'm not going to gain that size just to get a little bit denser fur. Uh, my boards are 5 eighths of an inch thick, 7 and a half inches at the base. Uh, there's several websites out there. I, don't know if the NAFA website will still have the stretcher sizes on them, but they should. And if they don't, fur harvesters will have your stretcher sizes on them. But I mark everything with a pencil because coon grease, if you use a marker, the grease so you uh, erode it away in a short time. So let's pin one up. Again, we're going to pull our smaller coons seem to have a little bit wider hips on them or something in relationship to their size. So you can easily get an inch and a half over or so. You see how we got a natural, I, I don't trim anything because I have a natural window because of the way the coon was scunned. And uh, every piece of fur that was on this coon when I scun it is going, unless I trim the legs a little bit. Again, that doesn't really have any value. Back side. Pin my sides. Like I said, I'm way, I'm way down here, so I'm not really too concerned about where I'm pinning it. So I'm make sure I'm down below that line. Again, I've been told by a few guys I use way too many pins. I've been told by other guys <laughs> I don't use enough. Um, I do talk to Greg Schroeder quite a bit down at Fur Harvesters. He told me just keep doing it the way I'm doing it. It's just fine so everybody has their thoughts that doesn't make them wrong this one here is pretty much short already I'm just going to trim it just a little bit yet that'll be it again don't forget your wedge One trick with wood. The longer you leave the hide on a wood stretcher, and I hate to call it stretcher, it's a first shape because you're not really stretching the hide as you can see. Um, the longer you leave it on, the tighter it's going to dry to the board. So I uh, I found on cool in this shop, my heat, I have in floor heat and circulating pans. I keep the shop at 54 degrees and it takes uh, four days. I pull this, this hide off 
and then I'll hang them on a hanger up till whenever the auction comes. They'll continue drying up there, but four days is generally more than enough time.